Okay, so this is another short one. This is a deaf culture um, uh, lecture, and oftentimes it's just a, ends up being a conversation in class that maybe lasts. Uh, I don't think I've ever had it last uh, an entire hour. It's usually like about a half an hour. Again, because we've already usually talked about this a little bit. We're going to discuss name signs. And um, not having in-person communication, it's been really difficult. Um, we don't go, we haven't gone into a lot of the deaf culture stuff. My name sign is this. It's an L, the thumb touches the nose, and just sort of flaps like this. It violates many of the rules of uh, that we're about to discuss. Um, and I've had a lot of people try to approach me and change my name sign because it doesn't follow the rules and it should be different. And it's tough because it was given to me by the deaf community for reasons and uh, not arbitrary reasons. Like there, there were specific situational things where that was appropriate and has stuck. Um, and I'll go into it a little bit more when we actually um, discuss this. There's um, uh, this one's not going to be a lot of signing because it's just we're, we're talking more conceptual stuff. Um, so, oh, come on. Care more. All right. Um, the goal of this chapter is that we're looking at the different types of name signs, the uses of name signs, and why they're assigned. Um, there are two basic ideas. They're either descriptive or they're arbitrary. Um, most hearing folks, we aren't given a name that describes our personality. Nicknames, yes, but not our actual names. More along the lines of it's usually illegal or some reason where you have to have a name on your birth certificate. So we got to have one right away. And you've, you know, parents put in all this time trying to think, what's the perfect name? Who do we honor? Who do we not want to insult? What kind of legacy do we, you know, I'm a junior. Um, uh, you know, my dad was, is Larry Nearing, I'm Larry Nearing. And I think the idea was that if I had us, if I ever, if I ever spawned that the male ones would have my name as well, cause we'd pass on this noble legacy of the name Larry. Okay. Um, it's not happening. Um, so in the deaf community, there's a little of that. Sometimes there's that idea of passing on the parental, you know, the lineage, um, but a little bit less so. It's not. It doesn't. It's not as important in, in how we actually communicate communicate on a daily basis. One of the things you'll notice too is in ASL, we don't often repeat a person's name. In English, we will say a person's name, you know, throughout the conversation, or if we're talking about them, we'll repeat. In ASL, we just point right once we've set it up. So names have less power in that sense. Um, oftentimes the descriptive names come about later. Um, most of the time a, a family will give a student or a child, uh, a baby, uh, an arbitrary name based on whatever reasons has nothing to do with signs. Boom. And it's given to them. Their name is Bob. My name is Bob. My baby's name is Bob. It's going to be Bob. Then trying to determine how are you going to sign Bob? Is it Robert? Is this with an R? Is it with a B? Um, and um, okay, so that's the arbitrary name. A descriptive name is one where it's iconic for the person, where somehow it reflects either uh, their appearance, their behavior, or um, something about their something about them that's that uh that is an icon of them so people go oh yeah that person i have a friend named rachel her sign name is this um and it's because she's an interpreter and whenever she interprets she tends to pigeon toe and put her toes together like this and then does this with one heel and it, it's not a negative comment it just is one of the things that many deaf people were like oh you know that interpreter she always does this Right, right, right. So that became her name, Rachel. It's a little weird. I mean, um, when we see the rules, 
It doesn't really fit, but it's perfectly descriptive. And everybody who knows her as an interpreter goes, oh, yeah, her, her. that's it. Um, uh, an interpreter in town named Juliette, her name sign is this, because she always had long, wavy hair that would, like, come down one over, over one shoulder, you know. Um, now she's got really short hair, but her name sign is still this. But everybody knew her as that. Um, my friend Troy, his name sign is this. It's because the way I heard it, the story he told me was is because as a kid, he really wanted to be a fireman. He loved firemen. And, you know, so his name sign is this because that's the sign for firemen. Right? Um, uh, so there's no new vocab for this one. All we're going to be talking about is sign names. Um, it's really not appropriate for the, the chapter tells you how to how to determine if one is a, an appropriate sign language uh, uh, sign name following the rules or not. And that's not our place. Right. Um, the best thing I can tell you is this chapter is really useful if someone tries to give you a name sign. If it doesn't follow these rules, don't get married to it because it's not appropriate. Your name sign, once it's appropriate and is given to you, will make sense. And it will be, uh, it'll be like a baptism is the best way I can say it. It's like, you'll feel like I've been embraced by the community. Now they have a name, they recognize me. So it's a, it's a kind of important step. It means you've, you know, got your passport stamped. Now, so, I mean, the same thing we talked about, you're given, generally you're given your name by your parents, your legal name, your English name. Um, and you could be named after, you know, anybody. It could be named after someone in the family, it could be named after a literary character, a uh, celebrity, someone famous from history, uh, whatever cult you happen to be, your family happens to be part of, you might be named out of their textbook. Um, some parents just go to a list of baby names and choose which one they want. And other times, new names get created or get adapted because the parents want something that sounds appropriate, sounds the way they want, right? So there are many different ways that we come about our first name, um, uh, meaning our initial name. But most deaf people tend to have two names. One is their given name, and the other is their sign name. Um, and again, the sign name is usually initially given by parents because they have to have some way of referring to this new offspring. Um, but it will often change. Uh, kind of like, I, I suppose we all have, we, uh, I don't know if you guys, you're pretty young, but usually every decade or so there's, or 15 years, there's a new iteration. Sometimes people have their their name that their that's their family name that's given. Oftentimes you'll get a nickname in school. Um, hopefully it's not like booger. I always felt bad for the kids who you know got caught picking their nose in elementary school and forever had the nickname booger. So it's just it's so cruel. Children are so cruel. Anyway, um, and then usually when you get to college, you develop a new nickname, right? You know, new people, you want to get rid of all the old stuff from town. And then your professional name might be somewhat different. It, you know, Larry is not exactly the most professional. So there were times where I would go with Lawrence. Um, uh, some people don't want their the gender of their first name and will go with a first initial, especially many writers. Um, many female writers would change their uh, nom de plume uh, because they wanted to be taken as by their writing, not by the gender. Or, um, you know, if you are uh, culturally speaking, people will change their names. One of my uh, good friends, his family changed their name around the turn of the century, early 1900s, because um, um, the way they said it is that their name was too Jewish and they wanted to be accepted in uh, American society. Um, and anti-Semitism is pretty, is still pretty horrible. So they changed it and, you know, they know the story, but so many other people have no idea. And sadly, it was a positive thing for them. So, uh, uh, so anyway, names do change. I don't know if you go by the, you know, uh, a lot of people, if, if they 
if my wife, if someone calls her Beth, it, they, you, you know what uh, time period they know her from. If they call her uh, Bethany, it's from a different age group. And then she had other nicknames growing up that if she hears that, uh, you know it was an inner circle of people who know that. And if someone says it and it's not them, then it's pretty offensive because she's like, you're not allowed to call me that. That's only for my really good friends. Okay. So again, name signs will change over time. And sometimes people have like a professional name sign. Many teachers will have a classroom name sign, which is different than their real name sign. Uh, they wanted my, in grad school, they wanted to change my name sign from this to like something else because this was not appropriate and respect respectable for a teacher. I'm like, I'm, I'm a silly person at my core. So this is pretty, pretty appropriate. And if I can't get my students to respect me by what I do in the classroom, um, then maybe I shouldn't be teaching. I don't know. Um, uh, anyway, you know, I, I'm, that's making an assumption that you respect me. So, um, so here's a video on, uh, from the textbook on how Sam got his name and, um, how uh, with a newborn they were given the name and I could explain it. Just watch it. It's all in there. And if there's anything you don't understand, just watch it again. It's really pretty clear. As you've seen with all the videos, they really level them up pretty perfectly. Um, uh, so now I'm going to caution you about name signs. Uh, no one gives themselves a name sign because it, that's one, it's just not how it works. And two, you don't see yourself the way other people see you. Um, and as I said, like when you're given your name sign, that's sort of a stamp of approval from the community. Um, so initially at first in all of our ASL classes, it's going to be fingerspelled. Once in a while, we'll get to the point where we'll talk about some, oh, you remember when that person did this? Oh yeah, that's the person, that's the person who's always like cold, just always cold. So, um, so sometimes I will refer to someone in class of, oh, okay, cold lady, what do you want? Or sleep person, what do you want, right? Um, that's the start, that's the genesis of a name sign. Or if someone's always dressed a certain way, someone always has, you know, uh, uh, I had one student who always wore a very shiny um, medallion. No matter what was being worn, oh, they always had a medallion. And so it was kind of when describing, oh, who am I talking about? Oh, person with the, meda with the medallion. Uh, um, that would have become a name sign, right? Uh, sometimes they're negative. If the deaf community does not have a good opinion of you, you may have a secret name sign that's an insult because you are not respected by the community. So why would they give you a respectful name? Um, uh, I have an ex who my entire family refers to as the princess. I can't argue with him. That's the way they saw her. So whew, dodge that bullet. Um, but, but basically once the community the deaf community starts talking about you. Oh, remember that person who came to deaf night? And oh yeah, which one? The one blah, blah, blah. And they start describing you. That will all get distilled down into a couple of signs that sum you up. So the people go, oh yeah, that person. That's where your name sign is going to come from. If someone is really eager, oh, you're, it's your first time here. I want to give you your name sign. Hmm, let me think. In the back of your head, just go, I'm not keeping this one. 99%, this is going to be a stupid name sign that is generic. It'd be uh, more interesting to have a barcode. Um, also, if it's something really superficial, like if it's a smile, if that's a pretty smile, I'm going to give you Susan is your name sign. Now, some people actually have that as an, a valid name sign. But there are a couple of places where it can be where it's very clear it was given to you by someone who had no business giving you a name sign because they just wanted to feel important. Uh, or they wanted to make their job easier in teaching like an ASL1 class or a, a class at a church where they just want to feel like, oh, you're part of the in crowd now. 
when really it's not an, it's not a sign name. It's like calling everybody Fred or Hey You. Um, so what are the proper places? Most of the time when you see a name sign, it will be either on the head, on the torso, or on your non-dominant hand. Sometimes it will also be in the center, just in neutral. It's a more of a placeholder with your first initial. Um, so on the head, and I, I've broken this all down. Usually it's either on the forehead, like, you know, dad, like Michael. Um, it could be on the temple, which are, you know, your dominant side, you wouldn't go across the way, but like Michael, it could be on the cheek, Michael, or on the chin, either on the side or in the front. Okay. So really it's boom, 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 boom. Um, and it's usually like a double tap or maybe a circle. And you'll see the talk about, oh, Um, the next is two locations where it will move. And it's usually those same locations. Um, so it could be Michael. Um, usually it's this way. I rarely see it go backwards. So boom, 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 boom. And... Yeah, from the chin, it goes dominant to non-dominant. Uh, forehead, it goes non-dominant. You're kind of, because people don't, people in signing don't like to cover their eyes. It's why you'll sometimes see the sign for no done on the cheekbone. It's because no one likes to have their, especially not deaf people, don't like to have their vision obscured. Um, I mean, imagine a deaf person and the lights all, all of a sudden go off. They can't hear, they can't see. It's really disorienting, right? So uh, covering up even just the eye is also disorienting. And it's not one of the big things that people would say, oh, well, that's why I do it. But it's pretty consistent that people will say, oh, I know that, I know that, right? Um, so do location. The next is on the torso. And usually it's over here. It's rare you do one over here. Oh, that's Mikey. Unless he's the boss, right? And there's a specific vocab word that's being used for them. Um, or it's on the chest. This also tends to be a bit generic. I, there's a lot of deaf ed classrooms where the deaf children are given, oh, um, why did you sign me out? Why are Hold on, let me pause this. Hi, Greg. Great. You were totally... Hi, bud. Yeah, I'm working. Can you... Can you not... Can, can you not knock things over? Please? being assaulted by my cat. <laughs> you can, can you please? Um, Grayson, come over here. Okay, don't shoot them your butt. Okay, so this and this, there, you'll see that in many deaf ed classrooms where teachers just give kids a generic name sign. Mikey's doing this, Mikey's doing this. Now it's Bobby's turn, it's Bobby's turn. And I hate that. Like I, I realize that they need something right away, start a class start a school year so that they can refer to students easily because finger spelling is not going to be very useful. And they do usually change. But until they do, it's the most generic way of referring to someone. Again, 
it'd be like naming every kid who comes into your kindergarten class uh, Fred until you sort out you. Anyway. Okay. So we can also do dual location if it goes from chest to tummy, Michael, uh, non-dominant shoulder dominant, Michael, or like uh, a sash coming down. This is like the sign for king, royalty, Michael. Um, they're a little bit more interesting than just the generic ones. Uh, but sometimes, though, the location, as we saw in the, the video with uh, Sam's name sign, uh, the location could be a family thing where everybody in the family has a sign name down here. Or I've seen where all the boys had sign names up here, all the girls had sign names down here. Um, there are traditions, and sometimes people in the community will go, oh, you're from that family. I think it's less and less so like that. Um, now, with, uh, with, I suppose, back with the schools for the deaf were stronger, and that's where everybody who was deaf went, there was more of a sense of that where, oh, this is a legacy we're passing on. Now, sadly, a lot of that's been lost. Um, the non-dominant hand, you can either, you'll see signs here, Michael, oh, that's, that's Bob. Um, the back of the hand, Bob, Bob, or the palm, Bob. Um, I find that they're not as common, but sometimes it's there. Uh, uh, and it also can be dual location as well. You could do boom, boom. Well, that's Bob. Like the sign for power. Uh, it could be longer. That's Jim, Jim. Uh, two location or I had a friend who was na is named Jim or O R R. And one of the signs for, or is this, it's a very signed English, but his name sign was Jim is Jim or. So it's a J O R R. Right. So, um, it's one more way you'll see name signs. So if you see someone sign with any of these, there's a good chance that those are name signs that, that, that they're bringing up in the conversation. And the last one is, it's like usually up here, and it's literally a placeholder. Uh, Isabel. Um, I mean, there's, a, there's, a, there's an order to name signs usually. Uh, usually they are not offensive unless you deserve it. Um, mine, Larry, is a bit offensive. Signs that happen on the nose tend to be quite negative and oftentimes insulting. Um, uh, I was given it because I was, I was taking an ASL, I think two class, way back in college, way back in the dog ages. And my cat is drawing blood now on my knee. Anyway, uh, I was one of the few people who was actually taking the class seriously. Almost everybody else was doing it. Uh, well, through the school, it was a way of, um, we were aligned with a hospital. And anybody who took a basic, any of the sign language classes could get an extra long lunch period because they would do lunch and then they would take the class. So tons of people would take the class having no intention of ever learning sign language. So, there was me and about 15 other people and we're all like, I was the only one going, I want to learn this. And they're like, oh, I have 15 minutes and then I have to go back to work. Um, so he would hand out when he would give a handout or, you know, give a quiz or something like that. They would take as long as they needed until the bell rang because it was easier. And we didn't have cell phones at that point. Right? We had wax, wax styli. No. Um, but I would be done and be like, mm, okay, I'm ready to go on, ready to go on, ready to go on, because geek that I was. And I didn't know enough sign to be able to really have a conversation with the teacher. So um, I would usually start off where as soon as I was done, I'd be like, I'd catch his eye and I'd do this. And then he would do it back and we would just sort of joke back and forth. Well, by the end of that class, at the end of that semester, he gave me the name sign, Larry. 
because I did this. It also encompasses, I, all through high school and college, I played the trumpet. Um, I also tend to be silly. So, and I, uh, I'm, um, I, I, I bug, sign for insect, bug people. Uh, so it seemed like that name sign was pretty appropriate for me, Larry. Um, oh. While he was doing that, he dug his claws in. That hurts, but okay, I'm almost done. Um, so if someone gives you one of the generic name signs, like smile or, you know, on the chest here, just be a little skeptical. If it doesn't rep if it doesn't represent you, how you look, how you behave, or the situation in which you're there, um, just be skeptical of it. Um, don't get married to it. Don't think of it as a badge of honor because it may just be a generic placeholder. Um, hold out. Um, I, I mean, you can even say to someone, oh yeah, well, they gave me this name sign. It's, it, it's, it's Larry, but I don't know. It doesn't feel right. Um, because it may be also that the sign has it is a vocab word and means something else. Um, like this is the sign for lazy, but also the sign for loyal, which is weird. I hate that they're L's. But um, um, also tied in with this, keep in mind that not every Michael has the same name sign. There is not a name sign for a name. Okay, There is... A name sign for a person. Every person has a different name sign. And even if the name sign is basically the same for two people, there's usually some slight difference between how they're signed. Um, and remember the power of a name. If if any of the Fae learn what your true name is, they have power over you. So name signs, name signs do represent people. And uh, there's a lot to think about. And... Uh, don't accept imitations. Cool. So I've also, uh, there's also another story here on the changing of name signs, is that people's name signs will oftentimes change over the course of their lives. And so here's some questions to think about as you're watching this. It's really easy. You don't need me to put the answers in here. Um, and then uh, these are a couple of more, uh, this is how it was initially set up in here to explain, I fleshed it out in a slightly different way with more colors, but I figured I would leave these slides in here um, just as you go through, if it helps. So there's no new vocab, again, for 8.14. So we're basically done with Unit 8.